can AI actually automate jobs? We tested this and it turns out that they can automate less than 10% of remote labor tasks. So they can't automate the full economy yet, but this evaluation should help the public keep track of AI's economic impacts as time goes on. That's why SCALE and the Center for AI Safety collaborated to build the Remote Labor Index, or RLI. RLI is the first benchmark that tests AI agents on remote jobs from various fields, not trivial job-related tasks. These are real-world jobs that people pay for from fields such as software development, design, architecture, and data analysis. Freelance work is uniquely powerful for enabling this kind of measurement. Each job represents a true distribution of complete, self-contained, economically valuable tasks. There's a clear statement of work, a price, and a concrete deliverable, representing the full arc of what it means to get paid for work. So what we found is that the best performing AI systems complete less than 10% of these jobs when compared to the gold standard that people can produce. Like most benchmarks that test license of work, RLI evaluates the entire scope of a freelance job, from reading a client brief to delivering a finished usable product. And we are not grading on machine metrics. RLI uses a simple human standard. Would a client accept this as professional work? Every task is head-to-head, -head. AI versus human, no points for partial credit. We found some interesting findings. Over 80% of the failures came from drifting away from the brief. Nearly half have quality issues. Others were incomplete or technically broken. The small fraction of tasks that AI did get right came mostly from creative work, like audio and image generation. Tasks like creating sound effect for a game editing a voiceover, or generating a logo. These are domains where AI is already good enough to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a human professional. But the harder jobs, complex, multi-step jobs that require following precise instructions over hours of work, still trips up even the best models. Most other benchmarks just measure how smart an AI system is, not necessarily how economically useful it is. So here's an interesting part. Even though models fail at most of these projects, we're seeing steady improvement. Newer frontier models consistently outperform older ones, and RLI is sensitive enough to track those changes. So as time goes on, RLI will enable us to see where the real frontier of automation stands. We are thrilled to share the results of RLI with the community. Take a look at the results at a scale's SEAL leaderboards. And if you would like to evaluate your model on RLI, reach out to us at leaderboards at scale.com. Hey Dan, what does RLI reveal the next frontier of AI development? So I think RLI uh, indicates a shift from exam type of questions that deal with closed-ended, very tricky puzzles and problems to more open-ended tasks. So our previous work, Humanity's Last Exam, was all about exam type of questions. And we indicated in the ending of that paper that uh, in the future, there'll be more of a focus on agential tasks. Do they have the ability to actually complete projects, not just solve closed-ended questions? This also indicates a shift toward uh, focusing on usefulness instead of raw intelligence. So a lot of the previous evaluations primarily tell you how smart the model is, not necessarily how economically useful it is. And similarly, we have a shift from these more ivory tower, abstract sort of questions to more practical real world ones. So I think that the future of evaluations becomes more downstream, becomes more agential and open-ended. And I think RLI uh, will hopefully give us a very good indication of, of uh, how those developments are happening in the actual economy. So the models are currently getting less than 10% accuracy on RLI. What do you think the implications of that are? What do you think that means? Yeah, so it means that for all these freelance tasks that we tested in this evaluation, uh, the best AI models can only handle less than one in 10 times at the level that can be accepted by a reasonable client as professional work. It also reminds us that work is not only about answering questions or generating tasks. It's about understanding the context, interacting with tools, and completing tasks into end-to-end -end fashion um, that the current AI models is lacking off. How do we decide to build a benchmark that measures the full product of automation rather than a narrow skills like writing or math? 
if we're just measuring narrow skills, we're not testing its ability to perform tasks over a longer time horizon. So there may be something that trips up the model and makes it not actually useful at all. And this is not necessarily well captured when you're just testing specific isolated skills or skills that don't require necessarily a long horizon length. So I think uh, by focusing on tasks that take people many hours or days, this allows us to have something much more ecologically valid and represent the actual work that people do. People do not just have to do small individual narrow tasks in their, in their real world job that are decoupled from other things. There's a lot of context, there's a lot of synthesis and integration into other things you're doing and you need to get all those sorts of elements right to perform your job effectively. So that's why we're not just focusing on can it solve closed-ended questions, can it complete isolated narrow tasks, but can it do a whole workflow. So the agents aren't getting a maximum score, obviously. This means they have lots of limitations. How would you characterize their limitations today? Yeah, so it shows that uh, today's AI agent doesn't really work like workers. They can reason, they can generate, but they are not able to verify, validate, interacting with complex tools, especially completing complex tasks in a long-term horizon. So that's why many of the failures that we observed is about incomplete tasks corrupted tasks and lower quality output. Why it is important to grant ROI on real paid freelance work rather than synthetic tasks? Yeah, so real work has a lot of corner cases and there's nothing as complicated as reality itself compared to just simulations of reality. So when trying to actually find out the impact of an AI in the real world, you need to have a data set or an evaluation that includes all those actual corner cases, not just the corner cases that you yourself thought of. So it's a necessary ingredient for something that is realistic in much the same way that demos are not necessarily representative of um, actual progress. It's easy to come up with demos, but the real world is a lot more tricky. And likewise, for data sets that are trying to measure economic impact, these can't be synthetic. You can't just ask somebody, what's the sort of question that seems tricky to you and write that down? That doesn't necessarily reflect real world conditions. For example, if somebody asked me, um, come up with a tricky machine learning question, well, I can come up with that. It'll basically be testing their mathematical ability that is very different from the actual work you do in machine learning engineering. So it needs to not be just off the top of people's head. It needs to be things that people actually do, and it can't just be synthetic or simulated. It actually needs to be grounded in the real world to include that large collection of, of corner cases and see how the models adapt to those, those challenges. Totally, yeah, it measures uh, the progress on real economic valuable tasks. Mm -hmm. So zooming out, what do you think that this means for the future of work and the future of AI? Yeah, certainly. So um, it's clear that AI is not about to replace workforce wholesale. As we can see, that it still faced on the very basic end-to-end -end tasks. So a benchmark like ROI help us to measure the progress there so that we can prepare ourselves thoughtfully rather than react fearfully. So how ROI is different from other well-known benchmarks? like GDP wall and, and three bench. Yeah, so I, I could just compare in turn with Humanity's last exam, for instance. This is more open-ended, this is more agential, it's not closed-ended exam type of questions. In the case of GDP Val, that's attempting to try to cover um, a lot of different economic tasks, but for all that, they're saying that it's approximately human parity, which just obviously isn't correct. AIs are not at human level in terms of automation, we'd be in a very different world. And in the case of Sweebench, that's measuring narrowly its ability to solve mostly Django types of uh, software engineering uh, challenges. And I think at least from industry, we hear that uh, with uh, Sweebench and Sweebench Verified, this doesn't have much more predictive value of the actual impacts on uh, real world software development anymore, um, such as its utility for cursor and things like that. So those all have Either it's closed-ended or it just doesn't measure the phenomena well or it's basically reaching the ceiling and is losing its predictive validity. Uh, so a lot of benchmarks are doing very admirable things and I think are good benchmarks, each of them. But ROI, in contrast, is trying to be more open-ended, is trying to actually measure the economic phenomena and is trying to cover uh, a much wider variety of, of economic uh, challenges and projects. So to sum up, what do you think is the most important takeaway from this benchmark? The single most important takeaway is that the AI progress needs to be measured against real economic terms. 
benchmark like RLI tell us that intelligence isn't the same with labor. True automation requires a full mastering of context, reliability, and judgment. It was really great to have you today here. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, and this was a good collaboration.